There are some who call you the enemy of the people. And he promised a bloodbath when he loses again. We have to take this seriously. I'm sincerely not asking of you to take sides, but I'm asking you to rise up to the seriousness of the moment. Yeah, the same thing. If you're wondering why some call them enemy of the people, well, you're about to find out why. Welcome back. Thanks for watching again. Last night, I took one for the team and watched the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And just, wow, these people are opulent, elite, and dangerously deluded. In fact, it was so bad, I kept getting flashbacks from the movie They Live. And for you, the human power elite. <laughs> You think your Irish grandparents are wondering? <laughs> what could I laugh at? On the third anniversary of January 6th, I went to Valley Forge. And I said the most urgent question of our time is whether democracy is still, is still the sacred cause of America. That is the question the American people must answer this year. And you, the pre-press, and you, the pre-press, and you, the pre-press, play a critical role in making sure the American people have the information they need to make an informed decision. A defeated former president has made no secret of his attack on our democracy. He said he wants to be a dictator on day one, and so much more. He tells supporters he is their revenge and retribution. When in God's name have you heard of another president say something like that? One desperate act available to him, the violence of January the 6th. And since that day, more than 1,200 people have been charged for their assault on the Capitol. Nearly 900 of them have been convicted or pled guilty. Collectively, to date, they have been sentenced to more than 840 years in prison. <laughs> when in God's name have you ever heard of another president say something like that? Oh, that was different. Just a quick fact check on that. Around 400 people were charged with rioting and destruction of property. All those other people he's talking about were peaceful people who were just on the Capitol property and were charged with trespassing. Meanwhile, there was 120,000 people who peacefully protested, yet never get mentioned by the media or Joe Biden. And he promised a bloodbath when he loses again. We have to take this seriously. Eight years ago, you could have written off it as just Trump talk but no longer, not after January 6th. I'm sincerely not asking of you to take sides, but asking you to rise up to the seriousness of the moment. As if that's not exactly what they've been doing for the last 20 years, and definitely the last four. But sure, let's pretend. For one, he's just lying about the bloodbath thing, which was a lie perpetrated by the media for Biden to use just like this. Is that really what democracy is? When a sitting president easily spreads debunked lies about his opponent as justification for his prosecution by partisan Democrat DAs for it literally trumped up crimes that nobody else has held to, thereby influencing the election in their favor. Is it a healthy American democracy when the media acts as an extension of that corrupt regime to enforce its beliefs and claims as the truth. It was an interesting night. President yeah. Biden came out, not a very long speech, no. a lot of jokes about Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. um, very Trump focused from President Biden. Also some direction to the media over what he thinks the media should do in this election. Uh, a lot to talk about. We are back with our all-star panel that was watching, that was laughing. Um, I was really surprised with President Biden. I, I thought that he knocked it out of the park. Um, he was funny, but more than that, he showed the charisma that people sometimes don't see from him. Mm -hmm. He was dripping with it. He at moment at the end, that we all have talked about being really heartfelt, a little emotional, could have come off as self-righteous mm -hmm. and earnest and scolding and it wasn't. Uh, you know, I, I love Joe Biden. Is it hyperbolic to say that if Donald Trump wins, this could be the last White House Correspondents' Dinner we see? Because, I mean, again, this is a guy who said he wants to lock up uh, journalists. He wants to basically sue MSNBC or the New York Times. Um, he wants to invoke the Insurrection Act to sure. go against protesters. That also already has happened.
the free press dutifully pissed their pants in glee at the chance to insert themselves right up Joe Biden's ass. It's the free press's job to stand up to this sort of thing, but instead they've chosen to be the enforcers. And here's the thing, you can't have a dictator or authoritarian state without that institutional support base. That's actually what we're watching here. Donald Trump could never get away with what we're watching Biden and his enforcers get away with right now. Does this make the media enemy of the people? Let me know in the comments. This is exactly why the so-called free press has been normalizing a couple different narratives. One, Democrats losing means the end of democracy. And just so we're clear, Democrats think democracy means Democrats in power. And two, there's not two sides of a story anymore, just theirs. Their campaign against both sides was pretty obvious from the start, but they continue telling themselves this lie to convince themselves they're not the bad guys, I guess. These two narratives give the Democrats and their state media mouthpieces all the justification they need to take actions that would normally be considered totalitarian or authoritarian. We learned that for a fact during COVID and we're seeing a continuation of it now. Are you still here? Might as well hit that like button and subscribe. I post regularly, usually every other day, but I'm a stay-at-home dad with four kids and things can get crazy. I'm not going anywhere though, so keep checking back for new videos. Thanks for watching.